imagine a new treatment testing phase that goes catastrophically wrong. Or finding out as an adult that you were actually a triplet and you were separated from your brothers at birth after being part of an experiment that no one even knew was taking place. We are talking about all of this and so much more as we dive into the top 10 unsettling experiments humans were not meant to see. Starting off in our number 10 spot, we have the telephone cats. Sorry to all the cat people out there, this one is not going to be for you. In 1929, two scientists at Princeton University wanted to conduct an experiment in order to test how auditory nerves perceive sound. This is obviously extremely important research, but the way they went about it is truly messed up. They took a sedated but alive cat and cut out parts of its brain. They then attached one end of a telephone wire to the cat's auditory nerve and then the other end to a receiver. When one of these scientists spoke into the cat's ear, the other one could hear it on the other end. This is very cool, but most definitely not an excuse to do something so inhumane. There were benefits of this experiment, of course, and it is believed that this may have helped lead to the development of cochlear implants, which is of course an incredibly important scientific advancement. The worst part, however, while the cat actually survived this experiment, instead of treating it like a king for the rest of its life, like it truly deserved, these scientists instead killed it just to see if the experiment would still work on a dead cat. It didn't. In our number 9 spot today, we have Bobby, Eddie, and David. When Bobby Shafran was just 19 years old, he found out he had a twin, a brother named Eddie. The two men were raised separately because they had been adopted at birth into different households. Not too long after finding out about each other, things took an even crazier twist when Bobby and Eddie found out that they had a triplet, another brother named David. What should have been a very joyous reunion for the triplets turned very dark when they began to uncover the truth about what happened and why they had spent all those years not knowing the others existed. As it turns out, they found out that they were forced to be subjects in an experiment that they had no idea was taking place. Peter Neubauer was a child psychiatrist who wanted to study nature versus nurture, but decided to do it in the most cruel and unethical way. He believed that twins or triplets had a better chance of thriving if they were separated from their twin, and wanted to prove this by unknowingly separating twins from each other at birth. Luckily, Bobby, Eddie, and David all found each other, and their story is documented in the movie Three Identities identical strangers. In our number 8 spot today we have isolation. In the 1950s, Donald Hebb, who was a professor of psychology at McGill University in Montreal, began a study to see how sensory isolation affects humans. He gave male graduate students $20 a day to stay in small rooms with basically only a bed in them. They had little human contact only when being given food and when being led to the bathrooms. They also took it a step further and had U-shaped pillows to cover their ears to block out noise, as well as gloves to limit their sense of touch. Every person in the experience said that they found their thinking and thought processes were affected as they couldn't focus on any one thing. Before long, the participants began having intense auditory and visual hallucinations. The plan was to observe them for six weeks to see how they were impacted, but none of them lasted more than just a few days. Every participant was far too distraught after only a few days from the experiment to continue on for any longer. It is crazy how quickly this all began to happen, but I'm glad that they got them all out of there and stopped the research right there. In our number 7 spot today, we have the CRISPR babies. This is probably the most well-known case of human genetic engineering, and probably not for the right reasons. On November 25th, 2018, He Jianku, who is a biophysics researcher, announced here on YouTube that his team had successfully created the world's first genome-edited babies. These babies, Lulu and Nana, were born from genetically modified embryos that had been made to be resistant to HIV. Here's the thing, no one is arguing about whether or not this could potentially be an amazing thing for people. Of course, if it works, this is a monumental scientific advancement. The argument is about whether or not it is ethically correct to genetically modify a human before they're really even able to be a human yet, especially when the potential risks and long-term effects of this kind were completely unknown. Again, it's not about what this is aiming to do, it just boils down to a lack of consent, especially on something that could have been lethal in the worst case scenario. This study also was conducted without the public discussion of the scientific community, which again is the source of quite a bit of controversy. In the end, he ended up being sentenced to jail time as well as being forced to pay a fine. Two others he worked alongside were also found guilty for having quote, forged ethical review documents and misled doctors into unknowingly implanting gene edited embryos into two women. At the end of the day, scientific advancements are very cool and very exciting and very important, but not at 
the cost of doing the right thing the right way. In our number six spot today, we have the Stanford Prison Experiment. The Stanford Prison Experiment is one of the most famous examples of a sort of experiment gone wrong situation. For those of you who aren't familiar with it, it started on August 14th, 1971, and it was led by university psychology professor Philip Zimbardo. The experiment took student volunteers and divided them into two groups, one group of prisoners and one group of guards, and they placed all the volunteers into a fake prison that was created for the experiment. The experiment aimed to see if and how quickly humans would turn evil under the right conditions and with the right amount of power. Basically, it was a test to try and answer the question of if humans are inherently good or inherently evil. I think everyone was shocked with the result. After just six days, the experiment needed to be concluded because the guards began absolutely tormenting the prisoners. It really showed the kinds of things humans can be capable of even after such a short time. In our number five spot today, we have Masha and Dasha Kriyoshlyapova. Masha and Dasha were conjoined twins who were taken from their mother and were subjected to a series of horrible medical experiments. Because of the fact that they shared a blood system but had separate nervous systems, they were ideal candidates for this research, although they certainly never should have been forced into it at all. Some things they did to the twins was force them into staying awake and seeing their reactions to sleep deprivation. They starved them at some points and even burnt and froze them to see what would happen during these intense temperature changes. They would poke one twin with needles to see if it affected the other one and submerge one into ice cold water and check the temperature of the other twin. The twins spent the rest of their lives having a pretty toxic dynamic, I'm sure in part due to the trauma they shared together as a result of these terrible experiments. The twins passed away in 2003 at the age of 53 and they were the oldest living conjoined twins at the time of their passing. In our number four spot today we have the undead. All right, we had one that was bad for the cat lovers and this time I'm sorry dog lovers, but this one isn't gonna be up your alley. If you've seen The Walking Dead or really any zombie anything, you'll wonder why anyone was ever conducting this experiment at all. A team of Russian scientists released a video in which they showed a few dog heads that were being kept alive by an artificial blood circulation system. In the video, scientists used a heart-lung machine and were able to show the dog heads responding to sound. They would wiggle their ears, blink their eyes, and sometimes they were even able to lick their mouths. In 2005, for some reason, American scientists began trying to recreate this horrifying experiment. They flushed out all of the blood from a dog and replaced it with oxygen and sugar saline. Just three hours after this and after a blood transfusion and an electric shock, the dog was somehow brought back from the dead. I truly wish I knew the purpose of this experiment, but I think I mostly just wish it never occurred at all. In our number three spot today, we have britches. Britches is a perfect example of a horrifying experiment done on an animal for human gain. Basically, researchers wanted to test out brain implanted sonar devices in an attempt to create something that would be an asset to people without sight. There have been people without sight in the past, and I'm sure also the present, who've been able to develop a sort of like echolocation type skill where by clicking their tongue or making other sounds, they're able to map out their surroundings. Such a cool thing, and having a scientific advancement or the technology to help with this process should be an amazing thing, and it definitely is, until this experiment takes a very dark turn, and this is where Britches comes in. Britches was a monkey who did have his sight, but in order to test the efficacy of this device, they needed a monkey without sight. Instead of finding a monkey without sight, which has to exist somewhere, they just took Britches away. And they did this by sewing his perfectly healthy eyes shut. This experiment was undoubtedly helpful in the scientific process, but it should never be at this kind of cost. It is pretty clear that Britches most definitely did not deserve that kind of treatment at all. In our number two spot today, we have THN1412. In 2007, there began the trial of a newer drug called THN1412 that was intended to be used to treat leukemia. It is normal for a new drug to have gone through an animal testing phase prior to being tested on humans, and this one was no different. This drug had only been tested in animals prior to this, but the animal trials were very successful, so it was dubbed safe to begin testing in human trials. To start off with, the humans were first given a dose that was 500 times lower than the dose that was given to animals, just to play things as safe as possible. Unfortunately, however, although they did take every step they could and truly were being as safe as they could, these precautions did not seem to be enough as this 
drug that had undergone all of the necessary pretrial steps ended up being catastrophic once humans became involved. This drug began to cause organ failure in those who had even had a tiny dose of it. I'm not sure if there would have been a way to know this prior to this terrible event, or if this is just one of those terrible caveats to the trial testing process, but this is truly a horrifying outcome that I don't think anyone intended. In our number one spot today, we have the Tuskegee Syphilis Experiment. In the years between 1932 and 1972, there were 399 black impoverished farmers in Tuskegee, Alabama, who all had syphilis, who were recruited to participate in a free program. They were told that the program would help them treat their ailment, but of course, that never happened. The experiment was conducted by people who were trying to see what would happen if the disease went untreated. Instead of treating the men with penicillin, which was the recommended treatment at the time, the men received aspirin and mineral supplements as placebos. And while this experiment was conducted to try and understand what effect the spread of the disease had on the body, the unethical considerations of the scientists who conducted it proved to be absolutely fatal and just downright cruel. Out of the 399, 28 of them passed away from the disease directly, 100 passed away from complications related to the disease, 40 spouses became infected, which was then passed on to 19 others at birth whose parents had been infected. This whole situation truly is one of those times where you stop and wonder how these things were ever treated as acceptable and really hope that things have changed for good. All right, guys, that has been our list for today. Thanks so much for checking it out. I've been your host today, Olivia Kozlowski, and I will see you all next time. Bye.